What's up guys, it's John Reeves Live and today we're going to be watching a music video for Forever Rain. And then after that we're going to be doing a couple of the bookish theories explanations about the Mono album. I'm really excited about this because there's a couple of things that I really enjoyed with Mono. Kind of just diving in a little bit more into something that I think is a freaking masterpiece. So we just did part one and two on YouTube. We had to break it up into two different videos. But without any further ado, let's get into the music music video for this. I don't know if this is the only music video that he did for Mono, but if it is, I'm excited to see it. If there are other ones, please Let's just let her do it. What's she doing? Yeah! <laughs> oh, <clears throat> composure, composure. Either way, let's get into the music video of it right now. Three, two, one, BOOM! This song is so beautiful. I'm gonna learn this on piano, for sure. That chorus is so layered up and like so beautiful. The backing tracks are amazing. Like that is what I live for. I freaking love the backing harmony. <laughs> it says so good. Ah, and the guitar in there, there's like that distorted lead guitar. It just really brings home like the whole feeling. So I think the chorus in this personifies the message of the verses, which is what you're really going for in a song in the first place. But this song in particular really captures that. 비가 오면 조금은 나 친구가 있다는 기분이 들어 자꾸 내 창문들을 두드려 자지내냐면서 안 부른 물어 And I answer 난 여전히 삶의 인질 죽지 못해 살지 않지만 뭔가에 묶여있지 나도 너처럼 어딘가 두드릴 수만 있다면 온 세상에 진하게 입맞출 수 있다면 그 누군가 나를 맞아줄까 내 고된 몸을 어쩜 받아줄까 제발 아무것도 못지마 그냥 영원히 내려줘 네가 내리면 외롭지 않아 너라도 내 곁에 있어줘 잿빛 세상에서 살고 싶어 영원 따위 없는 걸 알고 있어 Slow rap, slow jam, slow rain, everything slow When it rains it pours, when it rains it pours, it pours Forever rain That acoustic guitar coming in there is so 
well done. Like, if you listen to How It Enters, it's the first time it shows up in this song. He did such an awesome job producing this. When it rains, it pours, it pours. Forever rain. So clean. It doesn't even start on one either. Okay, so I know that this isn't what that song's about, but my friend Tommy, and I'm going to name drop him because I freaking love this dude to death, but Tommy the Headphones Breaker, posted something a long time ago on Instagram. It was a story about how mothers in Asia would go outside and stand in the rain so where they could cry. And it was like so where they wouldn't be seen crying, they would be out in the rain, and the rain would pretty much cover their tears. And they looked strong no matter what was going on in their lives. They just looked strong to their children. They looked strong to their household and stuff. Uh, but they would go outside in the rain so it would like mask them crying and that's whenever they would just get it out they would stand out in the rain and they just let it just let it happen i don't know if that's at all what this song has to do with but that would be really interesting to know if that's kind of correlating what what that song is about and i i'm sure i butchered that story i'm so sorry tommy if you're watching this i apologize but that was a beautiful story and it definitely affected me whenever i read it that's what i'm getting from this song i really think lyrically he did an amazing job really capturing that feeling the loneliness and he said like you know rain is kind of like knocking on his door kind of asking if he's okay it seems like a lonely feeling too that he's going through but it's all in all a beautiful song now let's get into some ideas behind the whole album of mono so let's get into the next video right now he's got a freaking button up cardigan heck yes why is my life like this <laughs> It's a very interesting setup he's got going on up here. I like it. I just felt my skateboards there. Just my skateboards fell. There you go. God of Destruction. Does he skateboard? I noticed those Carhartt skateboards in a lot of the other studio videos, but I don't know if he skateboards in particular. Okay, that opened up well. There, owner and mono Aremira and Shinkoga, my man is a mono running is a crown is a playlist. There's all they gave one in Koran Shinda. Only one way there's a Yan Shani Taman is a mono request. He's wearing my zone. Yeah, there you go. Book of Wuna will, yeah, go my etchy etchy mida. Edge. Nice. There, mono. Ah. 정말 무슨 너무 예, 진짜 뭐제 장난처럼 했지만은 일단 너무 많이 어 정말 좋은 말씀도 남겨주시고 우선 너무 많이 들어주셔서 제가 오늘도 이제 저쪽 밖에서 이제 앉아가지고 생각을 했는데 어 굉장히 감사하더라고요 제가 하던 이 모든 그런 어 불특정한 공간들에서 제가 가졌던 그런 사색이나 혹은 뭐 방황 그리고 고민 이런 게 마냥 무의미한 것은 아니구나 많은 사람들이 들어주고 뭐 공감해주고 혹은 어떤 피드백을 나한테 주는 게어 정말 내가 그동안 했던 것들이 헛된 것은 아니었구나 그런 느낌이 너무 들어서 Dude, if he only freaking knew 를 연대하고 있다는 생각이 들어서 너무 감사하고 
너무 행복해요. 행복했고 일주일 동안 너무 일주일 정도 지만 열흘 정도 지났죠. 그 음악을 들으면 그런 특정 상황과 그런 특정 계절이 생각날 때가 있잖아요. Definitely has a seasonal feel to it. 그럴 때 생각날 수 있는 그런 노래가 하나라도 있었으면 좋겠고 이왕이면 이 일곱 곡이 뭔가 이렇게 그 특정한 순간에 떠올려진다면 그런 노래들이 있거든. 아, 요 때는 요걸 들어야 돼. 내 인생의 플레이리스트에서 빠지지 않는 노래들이 있어요. 이소라 선배님의 트랙 라인이라든지 뭐 있거든요. 그런 노래가 되었으면 좋겠다. 누군가한테 감히 그런 마음으로 정말 정, 정성껏 내가 뭐 장인은 아니지만 장인의 그런 애티튜드를 열심히 다지려고 노력하면서 만들었고 If he only freaking knew Like how many people just to me have said that this mono album is a freaking masterpiece if you only knew. 어쨌든 사랑해 주셔서 감사하고 네, 앞으로 추울 거거든요. 좋을 거예요. 그래서 추울 때 많이 들어 주시면 좋겠고 뭐 이제 뭐 이거 한번 끝났으니까 어쨌든 작업 열심히 해야죠. <웃s> 아, 여기까지입니다. Okay, how crazy is it that he just said it's about to be getting cold and I hope you guys can appreciate my album when it's cold outside and it's about to be fall here for me. I can feel like every season when fall starts and it starts getting a little bit chilly at night, it's like an old friend creeps up on me. I am a huge fan of fall. I was born in October, October 2nd, so my birthday is like coming up. I'm like a fall baby and as soon as that first little cold night chill comes around, it's like a friend. Like an old friend comes around and I just love it so much. For me, like fall and winter is just time for me to be in my fills. I write a lot more during these times. I experience life more. Like I feel life more during the colder times. I don't know why that is. I feel like I'm very guarded during summer for some reason. But like, yeah, fall and winter are times that I really burrow into myself. It's self-growth happens and stuff during those months. Either way, let's get into some bookish explanations. Tokyo and Seoul explain. Yes. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, I would like to talk about RM's mixtape Mono, focusing on a breakdown and analysis of the first two tracks featured in the project. Is it Mono or Mono? Because I've been saying Mono and I might be completely incorrect. Please let me know. I know that's hard to put in a comment, but is it Mono or Mono? I don't know. Mono is a seven track playlist first released in October 2018, and it deals with the themes of loneliness, sadness, depression, the dichotomy between love and hate, and the relationship between life and death. The themes of the mixtape are foreshadowed by the title itself, which is a mm. word that may be read in different ways. In Greek, mono means one or alone, a word that is coherent with the melancholic vibe that is conveyed throughout the playlist. But when it comes to sound and music, the word mono is the opposite of stereo, meaning that the sound comes from a single frequency instead of multiple ones. This wordplay here is obviously intentional. Just by naming the mixtape Mono, Aram is saying that the story is leading us through is his own. He is the sole narrator and the only protagonist, and the songs reflect this by dealing with very personal and at times intimate aspects of his personality and experiences. The first track of Mono is Tokyo, a song that perfectly expresses the sense of intimacy I just mentioned. The song is entirely comprised of English lyrics and deals with the themes of loneliness, incompleteness, heartbreak and homesickness. At the beginning, Aram wakes up in Tokyo feeling like a torso. The torso is the middle part of the human body that excludes the limbs, <laughs> and right off the bat we get the sense that he feels incomplete. He woke up in a foreign city and feels like a part of him is missing, but there's no time to indulge in these feelings because it's time to go. The following lyrics mention Pinocchio, the wooden puppet who comes to life. The reference to Pinocchio is very telling of his state of mind, and it also reinforces the imagery featured in Fake Love, which was released just a few months prior. In Fake hmm. Love, BTS told us that for love they erased themselves and turned into dolls, an ideal of perfection that is very far from the truth. And in Tokyo, Aram feels like a doll, a puppet that doesn't have control over his life and is punished because of the lies he has told. What is interesting Dang. here is that in the original version of the story, written by Italian author Carlo Collodi, Pinocchio first appears as a log, a torso without head, arms or legs, something that scares the person who first finds it and is seen as beautiful only by Geppetto, the carpenter who will carve him into a boy. Pinocchio Jeez. finds a family in Geppetto, a home, because he is the only one who sees the potential in him and gives him a chance. 
The idea that home can be both a place and a person you love is a concept that lingers throughout the song as well, because Aran mentions someone who wants to be with but isn't there. He is homesick, but his only dream is to be next to that person. That's implied that for him, home is whatever that person is. No. Now, it's unclear who the song is talking about here. It may be someone he loved who is gone, a metaphorical you he still hasn't found, or even a version of himself he doesn't recognize anymore, but I feel like it would be more respectful not to make any assumptions. If he wanted us to know who the song is about, he would have told us himself, and since he didn't, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. Well the message done. of the song is clear with or without this information. Tokyo is about the homesickness you feel when you are far away from... I will say, that was classy on her part not to start making assumptions of who his relationship or who he was writing that about, or if it was a person or a, a place, because a lot of people would just take that bait and just be like, ha ha, here's who he's talking about, but she freaking didn't. I like bookish theories a lot. She's awesome. Someone you love. Loneliness here is not just seen as something that makes you feel incomplete or lost, but as a bringer of confusion and inner turmoil as well. In the song, Aram doesn't know whether he misses himself or the person's face. He's scared of the change tomorrow is going to bring. He thinks of life and death in abstract terms he struggles to define, and love and hate sound the same to him, mm -hmm. which is something also mentioned in Saw, the second track of Mono. If Tokyo is about the loneliness and incompleteness you feel when you are far away from home, Soul is about Aram's bittersweet feelings towards the city he currently lives in. The song is a love letter to Soul, and the sense of homesickness and foreignness of Tokyo so is now counterposed by a feeling of familiarity and comfort when talking about his city. Hmm. At the beginning, Aram reminisces about his past and the place he grew up in, which is very different from Soul, but that now feels very far away. Soul is his place now, and the song continues with Aram talking not only about the city, but to the city as well. Hmm. Soul here is seen as a place with a soul, a pun that personifies the city into a living entity with a face and a mysterious nature. Aram has a love-hate relationship with it, but he also loves to hate it, because he became a part of it without even realizing it. By admitting to this sense of belonging, Aram here is kinda using the negative aspects of Saul as a mirror that reflects the negative aspects of himself. In the song, he sees that he is afraid of himself because he has become a part of Saul, and this makes sense because the city is also the place where he works and spends his life as an idol. Hmm. Saul embodies the struggles of his adult life and his job, which also have good sides and bad sides he cannot do anything but accept. In the song, Aram takes on the role of a spectator that passively observes his surroundings. Soul lives and he sees it, and much like what happened in Tokyo, there's an underlying feeling of change that he cannot stop from happening. This is evident from the third verse, when he says that when he is on a bus, he sees the landscape changing while he is sitting still. In the song, the ever-changing nature of Saw, with its good sides and bad sides, may be seen as a metaphor for life itself, which is an idea that will be further developed in Everything Goes. Soul is his home, it's fast and crowded, and even if Aram is a little bit late, he keeps up with it even if sometimes it's too much. The love-hate relationship like between lot. Aram and Soul is also expressed through a series of wordplays in the second half of the song. The word Soul can be read as so, but when he proclaims his love and hate for the city, it can also sound like so, thus reinforcing his feelings. The same thing happens at the end with the words living and living. Living in Seoul implies experiencing the, the city in all its aspects, appreciating and loving it all the way. But living Seoul represents the desire to escape the negative sides of the city that overwhelm mm. him. If we look at this wordplay, love and hate really become the same word. They are interchangeable because even if they are opposites, they originate from the same strong feelings. Just like he learned to love the sides of himself he hates, he loves the sides of Seoul he hates because they are part of him and he is part of them. If we see Aram as a microcosm, Saul is the microcosm he has shaped his identity through. They are oh. mirror images of one another and connected because of that. So that's it for me today. I okay, so like, I pretty much called Saul. I feel like I think what she was saying is exactly what I'm thinking about that song. So I feel like I grasped that. Tokyo, I was kind of off on it, but I think she did a really good job of pulling those two together. I am excited to watch the rest of these videos. So let's get into the next one, part two of Bookish Theories Explains. So I think this is just Moonchild, which is awesome. Lyrically, that song is a freaking juggernaut. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theory. Yes, girl. In today's video, I would like to continue the mini series of Aram's Mono Explained by focusing on Moonchild, the third track featured in the playlist. 
If you missed part one, I'm gonna link it somewhere on top, so don't forget to check it out to get the full Mono experience. Now, Song in order to understand Moonchild, the first thing we need to do is to understand what a Moonchild actually is. In English language, the word is often associated with the people born under the zodiac sign of Cancer, but in this case it refers to those people who are more emotionally perceptible and often tend to find comfort in their own imagination. Moon children are basically dreamers, but a particular type of one. They are those people who feel more, who love more and are more susceptible to the sadness and pain of the world that surrounds them. They get easily overwhelmed by things other people accept as normal and because of their Ooh. heightened sense of empathy, they tend to suffer more than the rest. Since moon How many people out there watching this right now would identify as a moon child? I've never thought of myself as one, but with the empathy situation, I definitely take that on. If my friends are going through something, I am going through something, and I would not be surprised if some of my friends have gone through breakups, and it affected them so much, and they talked to me a lot about it, that it came out in my songwriting. Like, I definitely take on my friend's pain, my friend's triumphs, I'm there with a lot of things. So I definitely would, I never would have considered myself one until now. I never heard it explained that way, but that's really interesting. How many of y'all would identify as Moon Job? children find refuge in the fantasy world, they thrive at night because quietness and darkness allow them to recharge and give them the freedom to indulge in the dreams they prefer over reality. Hmm. The idea behind the song was first introduced back in 2017 with the song 4 o'clock, a collaboration between V and RM where they talked about two friends opening up with each other in a park at night. V later on revealed that the song is about him and Jimin, but in yes. Moonchild the imagery and symbolism associated with the song is further developed by exploring the themes of sadness, depression, introspection and the importance of overcoming your hardships by realizing your strength. At the beginning, Aram explains what the song is about and what it is meant for. The children of the moon are born in the moonlight and can't breathe in the sunlight. They are born to be sad and suffer to be glad. Aww. This part here is very interesting because it implies that Aram and moon children in general think they have to suffer in order to deserve happiness. In the first verse, Aram explains that moon children are destined to pain and sorrow. But this idea is not expressed in negative terms, but rather as an objective aspect that defines their identity. Hmm. Feeling more means to experience the world on a deeper level, and this world can be very beautiful but also very sad. Moon children feel all of it, and since they are born this way, they dance in the rain or in a crashing plane because they are used to it. <laughs> this is why moon children need <sighs> night more lyrics. than anybody else. At night, the world sleeps and they can console themselves by themselves, because they are the only ones who can understand what they are going through. Except this is not really true, because Aram understands you, just like he understands the importance of crying when you need it. At the end of the verse, Aram uses the word tear as a wordplay that links it with tear, meaning that he knows that you need to cry, but he wishes you not to tear yourself, that is, to destroy yourself because of the overwhelming sorrow you feel. By using this kind of imagery, Moonchild can be seen as a reflection on depression as well. If you suffer from depression, sadness and pain are part of your everyday life. Sunlight and interaction can be difficult and draining, but while night and silence can bring you momentary peace and comfort, it is also the time where the nightmares come out. When you are alone with yourself, your mind can be very loud, and Aram knows it, so he encourages you to cry to let off steam, but also not to let pain overpower you. Night is your time to shine and to rise, to find yourself again and to regain strength, which is what he's telling you in the chorus. If during the day you have to endure the stress, the sadness and the pain of the world, at night it's your time to shine, because the world is asleep. What is interesting here is that, that the imagery of so a person much. rising with the moon can also be read as a metaphor that conveys the idea that every person can succeed and find happiness at their own pace. The reality most of us live in is frenetic and demanding. You can get overwhelmed by the pressure and the expectations of those that surround you. But Aram here is telling you that everything is fine because your time will come when you least expect it. In the second verse, Aram further develops this idea by focusing on the contradictory nature of moon children, who are constantly overwhelmed by negativity but eventually live harder than anybody else. This part here is very important because it shows you how strong you really are and the potential this strength implies. In order to live back That second verse is probably some of my favorite lyrics that I've read in recent history. It's freaking beautiful. Tell with yourself, you have to know yourself first. And in this verse, Aram explains how the mind of a moonchild works, thus helping you coming to terms with the endless contradictions of your moonchild personality. 
Being a moon child means wanting to live but never living, wanting to die but living harder, wanting to let go by putting another weight on, thinking about not thinking, smiling in the pain. This way of living is exhausting and Aram knows it, but in the song he wonders if you know it, thus encouraging you to realize how strong you actually are by dealing with all these feelings on a daily basis. In the third verse, Aram further reinforces the idea that what you go through is something other people go through as well, and he does so by telling you to look at the night sky through the eyes of your soul, meaning that in order to understand what he is saying, you have to look at the world with empathy rather than with your own eyes. The world is so full of thorns, even the streetlights have them, and this sight is both beautiful and cruel, just like life itself. If you go to the window, however, that is, if you show yourself to the world like the world is showing itself to you, you will there's so much beautiful imagery in all these videos that she's showing. It's so beautiful. I don't know if these are music videos or what they are, but I have not seen them yet and I cannot wait to. You realize that you are not alone and that you can share your pain with the people who feel the same. At the end of the verse, Aram says that if you do so, someone will be comforted by the sight of your thorns. And this is at the core of his ideology as an artist. Even if it's very difficult for him to share these feelings with us, he knows that we need him to do so because that's the only way for us to understand that we are not alone. His thorns comfort us because they are proof that we are not the only ones who suffer, and as difficult as it may be, he encourages us to do the same because we are each other's nightscape and each other's moon. So that's it for God, me today. That, is so good. that was freaking awesome. I love the way that she put everything into perspective for that song for me. Because if I just listened to the lyrics, I didn't grasp it in the same way that she said that and explained it to me. It was so beautiful. I hope that you guys took a little bit of something away from that too. I know a lot of y'all like the song Moonchild as much as I do. Or more seriously after her explaining it like that, that song is even better to me. And I will say this too. Like what she was saying that once you just let go and express these feelings to the world that you'll realize you're not alone and i feel like we've done that a lot with this channel i feel like this is more of a like a journal than a reaction channel for me sometimes like i just look at a lot of the stuff that i've said in reactions that i've never even told my freaking closest friends i feel like there's a lot of moments in this i don't know if it's just like bts has pulled it out of me the lyrics the music or army i don't know i don't know what it is but it's definitely a different experience i don't feel like this is just a normal reaction thing maybe this is what everybody goes through that does reactions i have no clue i just feel like that's very true what he said at the end there confide in letting this out into the world sharing your thorns and just realizing that you're not alone that's been a lot of what we've done in this channel or that's what I, a lot of what i've done and i feel like you guys have just like shown me that i'm not alone as well too so thank you all for that let's get into this last video this one's actually kind of a shorter one um it's only like five minutes, but she explains a lot of songs. Let's check this one out right now. Swipe it! Everything Goes, I think it's my favorite one right now. Hello, <laughs> and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, I would like to continue exploring Aram's mixtape Mono by focusing on Bad Bye, All Good, and Everything Goes. Yes. If you missed part one and two, the link is somewhere on top and in the description down below. So don't forget to check them out after watching this video. Following Tokyo, Soul and Moonchild, Bad Bye is a very short song that serves as an interlude for the entire playlist. It's a great the song, lyrics though. deal with the themes of separation and the sadness caused by said separation. And the title is a wordplay that substitutes the word good used in goodbye with the word bad, meaning that the separation Aram is talking about here happened on negative terms. Hmm. The song may be seen as a continuation of sorts to Tokyo. It certainly deals with the same idea of two people being apart and one side being overwhelmed by feelings of sadness and incompleteness. But if Tokyo deals with the more melancholic aspect of separation, Bad Bye expresses the struggle of reminiscing certain memories that keep coming back. The song has a very haunting vibe that certainly fits the scenario that may have inspired it, and the use of poetic repetition further reinforces Aram's difficulty in letting go of this possible relationship and the pain caused by its ending. The lyric I will say that lyrically, this is probably like the darkest lyrics that I've ever seen in BTS. Like 90% of it. <laughs> like, I don't know how much. There's a high percentage of the lyrics that is just kill me. So like, there, this is definitely a darker song for anything that I've ever heard from BTS. Um, and I know this is just RM, but like, geez, I'm glad that he was able to get this out in a song. 
Pronunciations are very simple, but also very effective. The constant repetition of words almost feels like an echo, and this makes sense because an echo is a reflection of a sound that has already been made. The idea here is that a ram keeps going back to memories he doesn't like but can't escape, like a loop that forces him to remember that he himself triggers. The separation he's talking about was a bad one, he feels pain because of it and he cries, but only the other person knows why, which is something that implicitly seals the experience in the past. Mm. If bad bye is about a painful separation, all good may be seen as the first step towards recovery, I even if it's song. a fictitious one. Right off the bat, the song is very interesting, because mm. the title itself hides many layers of meaning. The title in English certainly expresses a positive feeling, but if we look at the Korean one, the word has several meanings that reveal mm. that the positivity is only apparent. Ogut can convey the feeling of being out of place, to go against something, to feel alienated or to pass or miss each other when huh. walking down the street. In the V-Live Aram helped to explain the mixtape, he mentions the second meaning, that is to go against something, but in the song, the others are relevant as well. Ogut is about Aram's attempt to come to terms to his own identity. In hmm. the live, he said that this song was originally meant to be his wing solo, and this makes sense because both Reflection and Ogut deal with the same themes of identity, struggle and inadequacy. The song begins with a statement that reflects the fake positivity of the English title. All I need is me implies a feeling of independence and self-reclamation, and it conveys the idea that he is fine being alone with himself. This statement, however, is immediately proven wrong by the very next line, and later on by the bridge, where he says that he feels lonely when he is with himself. This is so because much like in Reflection, in Ogut, Aram doesn't accept certain aspects of himself. He feels alienated and out of place, always lacking something he wishes to achieve. This is evident mm. since the very first verse, where he states that at times he is disappointed with himself. He would like to be better, to be cooler, to win, but most importantly he would like to accept himself completely, which is something that at the time the song was produced was still out of reach. In the chorus, the multiple meanings of Ogut come into play to further express this feeling of inadequacy. Aram says that it hurts to feel alienated from yourself, to feel out of place, to go against yourself, to pass yourself without being able to reach you. His ideal is far away from reality, and he expresses the wish to cross that bridge and reunite with himself to become complete. In the second half of the song, this wish is explored with a sense of positivity that is actually genuine. Even if he is struggling, he cannot give up on himself, he can't let go, because in his mind the real him is flawless. This means that while self-acceptance is still out of reach, he deserves to give himself a chance and he is willing to work for it over time. The idea that time is a bringer of change is the central idea behind Everything Goes, which once again uses poetic like repetition song. to convey the passage of time and the changes it brings. Much like what happened in Tokyo and Seoul, the theme of change here is approached passively, meaning that a ram tends to talk about it in factual terms, like hmm. something that just happens and you can do anything about it. This idea obviously has both positive and negative connotations, but it depends on how you see it. Time certainly heals the wounds of the past and helps you get better. It implies that your wish for self-improvement can become a reality. But at the same time, the song also conveys a feeling of inevitability that at times can be overwhelming. In Everything Goes, Aram embraces the passage of time, but also expresses his wish not to feel pain anymore, to become dull, which is something he achieves by standing in the wind and acknowledging the rain. Natural events. There are so many times in my life that I've thought that before. Like, I've been like, man, I wish I could just turn my heart off, you know? Just stop, like, feeling. And, and like, I'm glad that I never have done that or I never learned how to do that. But there's been so many times where I've been like, man, I just wish I was dull to the situation. But there's, I don't know. It's cool to know that he has had that same thought. Hence, the cleanse him while life goes on. So, that's it for me today. So, honestly... I absolutely love that album. All of the bookish theories explained kind of helped me figure out a, a little bit more, but like, I think my thoughts are the same on it. I absolutely love the musical composition of it. The lyrical meaning of it all is beautiful. Like that is an all together golden album for sure. It's going on the list. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Freaking awesome. RM crushed it. And I can't wait to hear RM's second album. I know he's got another one as well too. And that does it for me, guys. Thank you all so much for sticking around through this reaction. Please, guys, spread some positivity. Be kind to one another out there. And if anybody needs anything at all, all of my socials are at John Reeves Live. And I will catch you next time. Freaking toodles!